Hello and welcome to Modern Toy Fair News, the weekly show that talks about toys. My name is Michael and with me this week once again, the ho- one of the hosts of the Figuratively Speaking podcast, Nate. How are you this week, Nate? Doing great. How are you? I'm pretty good. Uh, despite, good. Good to see you again. A few, uh, yeah, great to see you too. Um, yeah, despite the post office, I'm having a pretty good day. <laughs> <laughs> great. <laughs> Uh, if you're new to the show, the way it works is we break down a handful of news stories that I decided to find on the great big Google machine. We do weekly purchases. I remind you to go and subscribe so you can have a chance to win some stuff. And then we close up the show and send you on your way after wasting an hour of your life. So might as well just get right into it. So first up, we have from McFarland Toys. As always, tons of news from them. We are getting a My Hero Academia 7-inch, and I'm going to butcher this because I haven't watched the show yet, so I don't know most of the names. Shota Azawa? I'm just, you're, oh, we're, oh, I'm shocked. I figured Nate would have been no, a My Hero I fan. Don't, That's, no. All right. I'm, I'm, and I, it's not that I don't like it. I don't know it. I mean, I know okay. it from McFarlane <laughs> and from the uh, – oh, there's another company that's putting some stuff out too, and so um, oh, that's all uh, I know. Yeah, it's one of the Figma companies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like Revel Tech or something like those. Um, yeah, well, uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm honestly shocked that you don't watch that because <laughs> I, I know you're a bit of an anime buff. Um, uh, ish. I mean, yeah. more, mostly older stuff, but still, yeah, I, I mean. I'm, I'm big into Dragon Ball Ghibli. Um, that's kind of where it ends, although I will admit just this over this summer, Mm-hmm. Uh, my kid got me into uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, so I've watched like oh, okay. 130 episodes <laughs> of that. So I'm well versed there. But those figures are like a hundred bucks a piece. So yeah, yeah that's, that's real. Rough. That's a commitment. That that is yeah, that's a big boy commitment right there. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me in a year, see where I'm at. <laughs> It'll be like 20 20 figures deep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this is gonna be. This is actually up for pre-order on Walmart.com right now, and it releases in February 2021. Um, obviously, if you haven't realized by now, neither of us are super familiar with the show. I know like no. the main character and the big buff guy with the eyebrows. All That's might it. Yeah, all He's might. He's got yeah. eyebrows. Yes, I mean, yeah, yeah. You, you know that him. I know. <laughs> He's got way more hair than I do, but the eyebrows. I. It's weird because you've been getting the McFarlane Batman stuff. Here some there, of right? it um, yeah. i'm very i'm very uh, touch and go with it like the the right. the white knight figures absolutely perfect absolute perfection the base figures that they've been doing eh, kind of iffy but I'm, yeah. I'm all in on the uh, death metal figures and, yeah those and look also great. the uh, last night on earth with the build a figure of bane yeah that take my money it's, it's weird because i was a mcfarland fan from back in the day like 1995 spawn wave one kind of thing mm-hmm. and uh, so I've I've been interested to see his progression. Uh, I was a real big fan of the movie Maniacs and stuff, some of which you can see behind me, although it is a bit of a mess. Things are falling. I'm redoing all of this, but I wanted to have at least some toys in the background that you'd be like, yeah, that guy has got some stuff. Yeah. Uh, but everything... think you're just some like stranger yeah, that I met at Walmart. Right. In... right. <laughs> in the but... toilet paper aisle. <laughs> uh, I, I Like a lot of people, I, I faded away from McFarlane when he changed the scale and then started doing more sports stuff. Um, I don't buy hardly any of these these new figures. I have two Wonder Woman figures in the Harley and Spawn, mm-hmm. and that's it. I haven't gotten any. I don't have my Hero Academia. I don't. I think I have one Fortnite figure that I use for um, a Harley Quinn display. That Teddy Bear Girl. Oh yeah, she that works perfect for that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, they're all good figures, and I've really liked where they've gone with this twenty-two point articulation system. Uh, I just I haven't gotten that many of them. And yeah, these characters, they, they look really cool. And I almost got that guy that had like hands all over him, like up and down his arms. He had like disconnected hands. Oh. It was very cool. I have no idea what his I, name I say, is. I don't know. I don't know what that is. It was like in like the second wave, I think. But it was really cool. It looks awesome. I just all those Fortnite figures look incredible. I don't oh, yeah. I don't play that. The, I, I they look great. I haven't played it in God at least two years probably like close to two years and i i still to this day debate on picking up rex the guy in the t-rex like costume because i'm like okay that's the character that i that was the one that they got me where i spent some money on it yeah and that was like that i was like that's the best one 
but I'm like, I don't need it. It doesn't really fit with any of my displays. Like if I had like a miscellaneous, like here's just right. random crap that I buy yep. just because reasons, um, I could probably justify it, but I, they, they, they're so good. The articulation, the, the ex- amount of accessories. I almost bought the, I think it's name's Leviathan. He's like the fishbowl head guy. Yeah. Um, I almost bought him just cause one, I mean, it's a fishbowl head guy. And right. two, like some of his accessories, I'm like, I could use that. I could use that because anyone who watches the show or knows me personally knows I am an accessory whore. Like I, I will I will be out on the street corner if you give me a, a good amount <laughs> of accessories. Um, yeah. So I, I'm I'm all for that. But uh, sticking with McFarlane, we're actually going to go in probably more into your wheelhouse then. Oh. So we got some official images of seven, I believe seven of the McFarlane Toys Walmart exclusive variants. And they are from DC, Mortal Kombat, Doom, Warhammer, Spawn, and The Witcher. And we are going to get gold label 7-inch DC Multiverse McFarlane Design Batman, which we've already seen pictures of, but this is like a little more official. You see exactly what like, he comes with instead of just McFarlane holding him on a real terrible like phone camera. Then we have the gold label 7-inch Witcher uh, Geralt. We've got gold label 7-inch Mandarin Spawn. Mortal Kombat 11 Katana Red Variant, a DC Multiverse 7-inch Arkham Knight Bronze Batman, which we've seen several times at this point. Yeah. A Doom 7-inch Bronze Marauder, and Warhammer 40K Unpainted Necron. So my first, like, the first thing I just want to mention is the bronze figures is getting out of hand. Like, I can't imagine... Yeah any reason for anyone to need that because even if you were like i want it as a statue in my display you could probably get a real statue (laughs) and yeah and the 40k thing like so this thing is supposed to look like a um like unpainted like test figure like like a prototype style so i'm like are you just taking advantage of that crowd that much that you're like we're gonna just release a completely just base mold nothing yeah and sell it to you I think that's part of the appeal of Warhammer is to like paint your own miniatures. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the idea that they're going with. So you could like paint your own faction or I don't know anything about Warhammer. I assume there's, I I know that it's like, it's got the little figurines and you get like a big ass map, like full D and D style. Like you do a campaign. Cause back when I played like magic and stuff like that, the card shop I went to on, I think it was like Wednesday or Thursday nights, they'd have like 40 K where like mm-hmm. these, and it was of course all like as terrible as to say, it was always like these like middle-aged dudes. Like you right. got all of us like college kids and high schoolers down in the basement playing magic. And then upstairs you have a bunch of older dudes just sitting there with these tiny figurines that they hand painted and look absolutely incredible. And they're fucking just going to war yeah. on this big table. And I'm like, that looks Some so cool. Some would say a war hammer. Ha! Huh. <laughs> I Ooh. see what you did there. Yeah, these are the jokes <laughs> that I bring. That's okay. Those are pretty much my jokes, so it's yeah. gonna be real awkward. We're just gonna bounce oh them off each other. Yeah. You should just have Jamar judge me as he giggles. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I think that one actually is. I think that's much cooler than the bronze variants. They were McFarlane was real big on those back in the Spawn days. Just mm-hmm. let's just spray paint it another color and put it in Kmart, and people will buy it. And we did. Yeah. Um, I had all kinds of figures that were just one color that literally were like spray painted gold. So, uh, you know, that's not for me, but you know, I, I, I hope it does well for them. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what an exclusive should be something that, yeah, that's I feel, cool. I feel like it, exclusive should, I mean, yeah, it, it needs to be something that's kind of out there. That's not going to appeal to everybody. So people aren't butthurt that they can't get it as easily. Right. But I feel like it should be more of just like a color variant, like or yeah. just a slightly different version with or maybe different accessories or something. Something that's minuscule enough that like I have to have it if I'm like all in on the line. But if I'm not, I'm like, OK, that's cool. If I don't get it, no big deal. Um, I, I but, wonder what the legalities would be of like taking like something like the Arkham Joker and mm-hmm. painting him in um, uh, Joaquin Phoenix colors like a red suit, you know, that sort of thing to make it different. Cause they, they're not licensing that movie for products I mean, th- per se. Theoretically, if they don't change the face sculpt, they still keep the Arkham Joker face. Yeah. I can't imagine there's any legalities that would stop them. Because... So like that would be a fun way to do it. Yeah. And then have Batman in all black or have mm-hmm. it be a blue and gray Arkham variant or something that's like brighter. I think those would be much cooler than a bronze one, but yeah. 
I don't be have like, I, I would I would hate this because I would need them. But I'd right. even be cool if like exclusives or variants were more so like, oh, here's a battle damaged version of the character. Yeah. Something so like someone who's crazy like me and loves that kind of thing. I'll eat it up. But like if you're just the normal collector who's like, I don't need Batman beat up. I have my normal Batman. Right. Like that, that I feel like would be perfect, but I'd hate it because then I'd have to like hunt harder to find the one I actually want. Right, right. Uh, but I mean, like even the the weird like McFarlane designed Batman, I, I, I don't it's know. It's weird I, looking. It is. It's, it's like weird. this weird like steampunk spawn Batman. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's what he was going for, but I kind of expected something a little bit different from Todd McFarlane. I don't know. Right. I expected more of like a like a murder Batman. Like yeah. I figured even like maybe more of like his version of, of Batman, like they did with the black and white statue with like yeah. the real like sharp corners of the cape and and like chains. The, like, yeah. Like I was not expecting a weird steampunk version, but hey, yeah, I mean, you do you, Todd. Yeah, he's gonna. <laughs> yeah, always has. That's, pre- that's pretty much what the what he does is he's mm-hmm. just like i want this so i'm gonna make this yep um but sticking with mcfarlane actually no that is it for mcfarlane sorry uh moving on from mcfarlane we're gonna move on to our overlords over at NECA, who mm. gave us new images of the teenage mutant ninja turtles cartoon splinter and baxter stockman two-pack which should be hitting stores soonish based on the new NECA calendar it should be like at the end of the month. However, the NECA calendar has already been wrong because the um, Trog and Grander already hit stores like two weeks before they were set on the yeah. calendar. <laughs> so how, how I just you, were you able to get one of those this week? I, I didn't up? want them. Uh, unfortunately, okay. I just I, I at this point, I, I don't want to dive into the line deep enough to get all of the characters. So it's only like the significant ones to me. Um, Probably a good so way like, to go. At this point, I just want the Splinter and Stockman two pack, the Android body Krang, and then unless they do like vehicles or dioramas, I think I'm pretty set. Like I don't really need like the the little odds and ends because I've got Rocksteady Bebop, Slash and Leatherhead, Krang and Shredder and the Turtles. So, so you're saying you you don't need neutrinos? No, no, I don't. <laughs> That's gonna be a tough one when it comes to me because I don't want them either. Mm-hmm. I never had them as Playmates figures. I didn't have any of them. I was like, no, thank you. I don't like any of these, <laughs> but I'll get them now. <laughs> just because just of that completest uh, mm-hmm. mentality. Sickness. It's, it's so difficult. It really is. Well, I, so here's the question then. As a completist, do you need two different versions of the um, Triceraton, Infiltry Men, and Roadkill Rodney? Because the first set that hit stores had a misprint and the new sets that are hanging stores have a sticker over the misprint. Oh, it's a box variant. Yeah. I'm good. Okay. I, open I wasn't anyway. sure. Cause I know yep. I remember years ago when black series first first started the numbers thing, like really yeah. messed with you where you're like, I have yeah. to make sure I have all of them. Yeah. I, that, that gets solved real quick when you just open everything up instead. Yeah. That's a, that's kind of how I feel. Like yeah. I still have all the boxes on a shelf in my closet, but yeah. I, I could care less if it's new logo or old logo. Like I saw people yeah. like being like, what's the new rock stay and bebop going to have? And I'm like, right. Who cares? You know, and if them. you only collect maybe like one line, so maybe you're only into NECA turtles and this mm-hmm. is it for you, then yeah, you're probably going to want those variants yeah. and, and stuff. I, there's just way too much other stuff to get. Yeah. Which I feel like that will only really apply again. Like you said, if you're an inbox collector, because mm-hmm. if you're like doing it, you can army build and buy like seven of them. Mm hmm. But, like, you're not going to care at that point if you have which yeah. version of the box. Uh, I, I'm I, just waiting. I think the, the, they're going to be tough enough to get, to get one. I don't think I'm going to bother with, like, trying to army build Roadkill mm-hmm. Rodneys and Triceraton Infantry or anything like that. I, I ended up getting two, I think two of the two packs are the foot soldiers because they were running, like, a buy one, get one half off one time. And they mm-hmm. actually had them in stock. It's just, oh, the new ones have been tough to see just sit there. Yeah, these new sets is pretty much like there's like two to five of them and they're gone within like a yep. couple of days if you're lucky. Um, yeah, I, I didn't even buy the foot soldiers, like all the foot soldiers that have come with them. Mm-hmm. I've, I've sold them because I'm like, I, I just I didn't like the cartoon foot soldiers with the big no. like, weird cone. Heads. Yeah, um, the only foot soldiers I actively want to army build would be the mirage ones just because that's my favorite They're version cool. that they've done yeah and that's an expensive venture because they only come with that uh, shredder 
NYCC mm-hmm. two or four pack. Yep, and they're all different too. Mm-hmm. Like so, you're, you're, that's why it's cool. You're getting a different. You're getting three different foot soldiers. There's yeah. little slight variations on each one, but yeah, but yeah. That's... But then you have to spend like two hundred dollars, like multiple times, yeah. and then you have a bunch of shredders and and oh, what were they called? They weren't Krang. They were U- Ulog. U- uh, oh no, uh, U- Utrons. Utrons. That's right. Um, yeah. Because I got a lesson from that from Wes when I like came back from NYCC that year, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, I got a little yeah. Krang," and he's like, "That's not Krang. He wasn't called Krang yet." <laughs> and I'm like, "Okay, my bad." <laughs> oh, Wes, what a nerd! Right? Oh man. And I, I, I not gonna lie, I'm probably gonna end up selling Baxter Stockman because I really don't care about him. I just want Splinter. I, they both look great. Mm-hmm. I, I'm a little miffed because it's like. I get these two little guys for 50 bucks. Like, but I mean, if you look at the amount of accessories they come with, yeah. they kind of make up for it. Cause yeah. like shredder has like two swords, one that's on fire. He's got a scroll. He's got open book, a closed book. He's got his like pimp daddy chain, a random pistol. Yeah. And the stockman comes with like, I think like a house plant, a computer and a bunch of other stuff. I, I don't know if you saw, but, uh, Randy, on Twitter confirmed that there would be a uh, Mouser's pack available at some point. Ooh. So that, yeah. that I will army build. Cause those, yeah. those are tiny enough that like I can work them into the display. And I just, I think the Mausers are cool. Yep. <laughs> um, I almost did that with the old comic con set that they did years ago for the Mirage ones. Uh, uh, back before that's the they... only Mirage figure I don't have. Well, the crazy thing is, like, a few years ago, you could get that thing for, like, 40 bucks on eBay. No I big know. deal. Now it's just, like, insane amount of money. That and yeah. the, the really crappy blue April. Yeah. And I'm like, man, that was just, like, out of nowhere. No one wanted them. And now all of a sudden, people are like, $300. Yep. Uh, so moving on for, from Cartoon Turtles to, in my opinion, the better Turtle News of the Week. Super 7 finally announced Wave 4 of the Ultimates line. We're getting Donatello, which will include alternate head, hands, communicator, the classic weapons rack, uh, comma, turtle, fist daggers, bow staff, and ninja stars. Mondo Deco, or Deco, Mondo Gecko includes alternate head, alternative hands, and turbocharged sewer skateboard. Casey Jones includes alternate hands, golf bag, three baseball bats, each with different moldings, two uh, hockey pucks and two hockey sticks, which also have different moldings and also the classic uh, style weapons rack and rounding out the wave. We have Muckman with Joe eyeball, which will include alternative hands, a trash can and a bazooka. So not gonna lie. I'm both excited and sad about this news. So oh, why are you sad? So for anyone who like has actually consistently watched the show or even watched my review of the Raphael, I hate the Playmates figures. Like growing oh, up, I loved really? the I loved the ones like from the cartoon with like the right. weird diggy. Like uh, Leo had like the pop out eyes and like stupid stuff like that. But I did not like the the eighties versions, the originals. Those essentially, like I think me and Jamar talked about them. Those were essentially like de- I had them, but they were designated as like bathtub toys because I didn't want to ruin my good ones. Wow. Um, and. I so I like I love this line just because the, the figures are incredible and the alternate head is just, you know, modern enough to like pass as like a comic book turtle instead. But of course, they had to make Donatello that sewer poop green. And I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, they've all been they're all going to be a different color. They're slight different, I, slight I know. shades. But all the, uh, the other three have always just been like, oh, a half a shade off. And Donatello looks like he like fell asleep in the sun too long. That's because he's the best turtle. <laughs> he is, which is why he shouldn't be sewer poop green. <laughs> yes, he should. I'm very into his sewer poop green. Like, I'm still going to get it, but I'm very, very sad, especially because my, my kind of ruins my plan because I have discovered this new obsession of, of customizing things. And I saw someone do this with the NECA turtles, which I did with Leo and I'm going to eventually do with the rest of them. But I also did it with my raft where let me grab them off the shelf over here. I actually wrapped his hands and arms and feet and everything to make him look more like the comic books. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, and I'm like, 
that way I get even further away from like the playmates look. But I don't know like if it's gonna bother me too much that that Donnie's gonna be that that's that's such a dramatic different shade. But <laughs> but I, I'm I, yeah. I'm pre-ordering it, so it doesn't matter. They're gonna take my money because Donnie's the best turtle, and right. I'm already like. I got that Raphael figure who's the worst turtle and I fell in love with it. I'm like, I honestly want this more than the NECA turtles at this point. Like these are yeah. so good. Yeah. And then, you know, cause the, the turtles are a good size mm-hmm. and seeing how much bigger Muckman is than Donatello in those pictures. Mm-hmm. Uh, that thing's going to be gigantic. Oh dude. Even when they showed off, um, Roxy and Bebop and how much yeah. bigger they are. I'm like, Oh right. yes. Yeah. yeah. These are going to be great. I think the only other one I'm like, because I, I, I've i already st- like stated since I'm not doing this because they're Playmates style, I'm just doing it because I want certain ones for my own nonsense. I want Casey Jones just because I love his accessories. Yeah. But I don't like him. <laughs> I think I, I don't like that style of him. So I'm like, right. Do I need to spend forty five dollars to get like a bunch of baseball bats and, and, and hockey sticks? I mean, you're the accessory whore. Only you can I, answer that. I am. And I'm just very, very like on the, I'm going, keep going back and forth. Like I haven't actually put the pre-order through yet. Cause I'm like, oh, if I'm going to do, it, I'm going to do them both at the same time. I'm not going to have two right. orders come through. Might as well pay for shipping once. But I'm like, oh man, do I need it? And I keep looking at well, like, oh, each one's individual, like molding, like, oh. Are you doing it through Big Bad Toy Store or through Super 7? I was going to do these ones through, through uh, Super 7 because the rest okay. of them, I, mi- I was on the boat late. So yeah. I had to do them through Big Bad Toy Store, and I feel like since Donnie's my favorite, I'm not going to want to wait two months after right. everyone else gets him. Like, I'll, if, if I have to wait that long, I'll probably break down and spend like 60 bucks or 80 bucks on on Facebook or eBay or something to snag him from someone. Right. But so I'm like, I have to get him from Super 7 just to make sure that I get him right away. Yeah, uh, but moving on from... <laughs> super seven i mean and... we can we can spend hours on those those turtles it's oh oh we we 100 percent could i mean yeah it... i'm sure I... with the other you know hosts that you have you guys probably talk turtles oh more so than most we, we we had a we used to have a segment called turtle watch 2020 where we had i've seen and, those yeah where we've talked about uh NECA and all the news back when you know everything hit like the shit hit the fan with mm-hmm. like the first set of releases and everything so we essentially would spend like 30 minutes on the news and then 40 <laughs> minutes talking about Ninja Turtles and yeah. whether or not we hate or love NECA that week. Right. <laughs> so like, trust me. Yeah, we could go for hours. We could we could make literally just a show about Ninja Turtle toys and yeah. still fill the full like hour time slot. Yeah. Um, But from Hasbro, we have announcements of a Thanos and Children of Thanos five pack. And I'm going to butcher all these names because it's been so long since I've seen the movies. Uh, <laughs> we've got. I'll try to help. Yeah, I, I hope you can. Uh, Proxima Midnight, Ebony Maw, Corvus Glaive. Corvus. Close. Corvus. OK. Uh, Call Obsidian and Thanos. But he comes with his finger looking good, extra crispy, swappable head and arm. And this set is listed at one one nineteen ninety nine on Amazon with the December fifteenth yeah. ship date, and I've seen very mixed feelings about this from from collectors. And yeah. I can tell by your face that you you're one of them. <laughs> no, actually, I'm not. Um, I pre ordered it within like three seconds of seeing the first picture. Um, it, what's what's interesting is every one of those figures has been changed to a degree. Mm-hmm. Um, Ebony Maw and Corvus Glaive probably the least. But and I've heard them talk about this a lot, and I know this about you know toys with it being like almost a year out gestation period. Mm-hmm. They're working from a lot of um, concept like Hasbro. It's concept art, yeah. yeah. So by the time that the movie comes out and the figures are out, they're a little off, yeah. And so they've they've taken this opportunity, to, I think, to correct that because Call Obsidian was one of the worst, and that was a build a figure. And when you got him completed, like his torso. Mm-hmm looked nothing like it did in the movie mm-hmm. um thanos looks way better now yeah you get i mean some people are saying it's oh i'm paying 20 dollars for an extra arm and a head eh, i think there's a lot more there proxima midnight has a whole new head sculpt that looks more movie accurate um you get a, a couple of different weapons and things like that so i 
it's twofold here. Like either you have them and you don't want to spend the money, which I get, mm-hmm. or you didn't get them because some of those were a pain to get. Um, and you get this, or you're an idiot like me, and you have those, and you'll get this one too. I mean, in your defense, like you said, they they finally corrected it so it is mm-hmm. more movie accurate. Which I feel like if I was going to, if I was in the MCU line and I was collecting those figures, I'd rather get the movie accurate ones than the ones that are nowhere near close because they were based on concept art because right. they weren't finished. So, like, uh, and especially I for that the- price point, I mean, these figures retail usually around like twenty bucks. So five and these are mostly, I mean, Call of Obsidian was a build of figure. Thanos was a build of figure. Um, the other ones, I think, well, Corvus Glaive and Ebony Maw were in two packs. Mm-hmm. Or no, Ebony Maw came separately. I'm, I'm misremembering. Um, but, you know, it's just like the people that are getting mad about it, like, I'm just asking them, like, I want to ask them, would you rather them not fix it and just leave it the way that it is? Or would you rather them fix it and give you an opportunity to buy it all together? Like, it would be even worse if they fixed it and put them in another wave with, like, a Build-A-Figure or something like that. This is an Amazon exclusive. You don't you don't have I, to buy it. I, I feel like that's where I think the problem is, like, to be devil's advocate, is more so that they want that alternative arm and head. Mm-hmm. But they don't want to get the other five figures because they're satisfied with the versions they got. Because, let's be honest, like... Unless you're hardcore into the MCU, you you don't care about the children of Thanos that much. Yeah. So, like, it, it, you could live with or without them, depending on how accurate they are. But that that like burnt up crispy Thanos arm and head, those ones are a little cooler just because you know it's 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 that variation that we don't get. We don't get battle damage stuff often. Right. So like it's that allure, and you're like, oh well, that's the only part I want. Now I have to spend 120 dollars to get it. And like even that, like even with the two of them being build figures, 120 bucks is not bad for what you're getting because build figures now that are being repackaged as normal figures are like 30 bucks. Mm-hmm. So you've got 60 plus three other figures that are 20. So I mean, you're you're at that 120 dollars, and I imagine it's probably free shipping of Prime. So mm-hmm. realistically, it's no different than if you bought it at Walmart. But I get it. Yeah, if I if I was one of those people who was like, I have the Chandler of Thanos just because one. I wanted it to have it completed. I don't care what they look like. They're just in the back of my display. Um, but I want that Thanos, then yeah, that sucks. But at the same time, you might as well order it, because if you try to buy that separate, you're going to probably spend 80 or 90 bucks to get that yep. when you could just sell the rest of them for like 10, 20 bucks and try to make some of your money back if you don't want it. Yep. You won't get you know exactly back, but you'll get mm-hmm. a portion of it if you don't want them. Yeah. So. I- I mean, that's what I do all the time. Like, that. that's what I do with, like, a lot of the NECA turtle stuff. Like I said, I sell the, the foot soldiers because I have no interest in them. Right. So someone gets one of those for a decent price, then I can make some of my money back, and I'm happy, so. Yeah, absolutely. So you just got to bite the bullet, man. Yep. Uh, so this weekend would have been NYCC, mm-hmm. and companies are kind of spreading it out throughout a course of a couple of weeks, just like they did with Comic-Con. So we have Tamashii Nations who showed off more pictures of at least one and a half figures. I'm, I'm kind of excited about one. I'm like iffy. The other one, I'm super excited. So we're getting the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball launch, but it looks like she now comes with both the blue hair and the blonde. Yeah. Which before they showed her off with the blue. And then the one I write, this is a must for me. First form Frieza, but he actually is coming with his hover round yep. pod. And like that... I was already on board for this figure and I was like, they're going to charge me like 60 bucks for this little, little rinky dink Frieza, but I'll do it anyway. But the fact that he comes with the, the pod and I assume like an alternate tail. So it's like kind of folded over that. Yep. Take my money. Uh, and yeah, then of course I... they put up pre-orders for the uh, Bandai, the premium Bandai exclusive Raditz, which is $70 and ships in April, which I have to have that too. Yes. How many of the premium Bandai have you done? Uh, so far, I think only one or two. I, 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 this summer, because of this show, I just recently jumped back on the figure arts bandwagon because I, I, I had cut so much stuff out of my collection for a long time. And then Comic Con happened and I managed to get the um, Ultra Instinct sign Goku. And I, and I got it in the mail. I'm like, this thing's incredible. And I'm like, I have to have more. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think Finger I got Jace. And... Yeah, 
I think I got Jace. I, I'm going to pre-order Raccoon just because now, since I missed out on... Well, I didn't really miss out because he came out at like a normal retail, but I'm probably going to pick up Genyu and that two-pack yeah. that they're doing for NYCC weekend. Um, but yeah, I, I think in just the couple months that I've been doing, or back in the line, I've got... Let's see. I have about 17 of them. Nice. Um, one of them being Thick Boy Grade 8 Vegeta. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got him. Yeah. I, I, yeah. That, that's my favorite version of Vegeta. Like, that's one of the one of the only Funko Pops I own is that one. So yeah. when they showed that off, I was like, I need it. And then they finally put it for pre-order. I'm like, I'm getting it. <laughs> I just yeah, got him Friday. Oh, he's yeah, so, he's so, so thick. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a chunk O plastic. Oh, yeah. I, He's amazing. That box showed up and I was I was not prepared when I opened yeah, it. No. I'm, like, I'm like, oh, damn. No, that's <laughs> it was even bigger than I thought. It was it's yeah, massive. like I expect I was like, I was like, OK, so I've got like, you know, fully like bulked up Broly. So I'm like, he's probably gonna be about twice that size, is my guess. Nope. He's at nope. least three times that size. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I love what they're showing already. I love what they're doing with um, the premium site. Uh, Raditz looks fantastic, oh, even yeah. though he's like such a he's he's a he's only in it for a little bit, but he's so crucial. He is. Um, he's really that like pillar that like yeah. that entire series is built off of. Yep. And I love that they're like I liked Dragon Ball Super. It was great, mm -hmm. and I like that they did a lot of those characters. But you know, getting these uh frieza era, era characters and you know the grade eight like that's the stuff i want to see more of in addition to the original dragon ball stuff and, mm -hmm. and it's funny because you say launch i say lunch i because i'm so used to, i only watch the the oh, that's right you're you're yeah i'm, you're, a, you're, I'm you're a purist. purist it's fine but i'm not gonna hold that against you you like what you like and that's what you should do <laughs> i mean i'm just gonna be like, i'll be different. straight up with with my with my viewership i only yeah. like the dubbed version for two right. reasons one because Goku's a voice in the Japanese version is very annoying to me. And two, I am at best a remedial reader. So trying to read subtitles while keeping up with what's going on the screen yeah. is a no go for me. Like, I, I yeah. just I can't do it no matter how hard I try. So I don't have a choice. I, I either have to assume what's going on or I have to watch the dubbed version. Yeah, your number one is also my number one for watching the the. Uh subtitled version like oh, my goku you, has to have that, that that screechy like yes like to clearly me, a goku woman voice um i hadn't i hadn't watched the dub in i mean i'm gonna say at least 16 17 years ever mm -hmm. since they started putting the initial dvds out in like 2002 2003 i've never turned back so when i went to see the the broly movie this was the first time i'd seen the oh, dub that, yeah that would and, be a little bit of a shell shock for you I, I was actually kind of impressed because i've always hated the dub and the voice actors and stuff and i and i thought that they've grown like a ton i realized mm -hmm. that a lot of them were the same um but they really have like the guy that does goku now portrays him more appropriately um you know goku is not very bright he's very oh, naive yeah, he's dumb as a box of rocks <laughs> yeah and i don't think that that came across early on in the in the dub he was more of the the hero and I was like, uh, I need him to sound like a little, little tiny Japanese lady. And I feel like that, that more is just, that's just, you know, because America's like, we can't have this on the show and, and right. not be the hero. We want to market this to sell toys. Yep. No. And I understand completely why they did it. Mm -hmm. I just don't like it. Cause yeah. to me, what I love about it is basically his balls never dropped. Cause he <laughs> sounds the same. <laughs> from when he was a kid all the way up through. So, and apparently that's all Saiyans because Gohan and Goten are the same as well. That's so, funny. Yeah, Ironically, it's all the I same think, lady. I think in the dubbed, they actually, when they switched from Dragon Ball Z to Kai and, and also Super, they changed the voice actor for Gohan. Because oh, even in okay. the new Dragon Ball Z Kakarot game, I'm like, I need to go rewatch the like original version because mm -hmm. this voice just seems a, just just off enough. Like, it sounds like someone's trying to match yeah. it versus actually being the voice, um, which that's one thing I will say. If you I know you're not a big video game person, but if you get the chance, the, the Dragon Ball Z Kakarot game is absolutely fantastic. And I, I have feel it. Like they, they, I feel like they've corrected 
the issue of Goku being like the hero. Like he's very yeah. much like this idiot who just happens to fall into the hero care category. Oh, that's cool. Um, I bought it because it came with a great statue. And I, so, I was just about to say, I'm assuming you only own it to get that really cool statue yep. that I wanted, but I couldn't justify the 250 for it. My wife just bought it for me. This, oh, this is damn. the nice thing. This is nice the part about being married to someone who makes way more than you do. Um, <laughs> I highly recommend it if you can do that. Uh, you, you've heard but, it here first. Yeah, Always marry so, up when it comes to financials. Find you a sugar mama or sugar daddy. <laughs> please do. Um, but yeah, I bought two games in the last year. Both of them were to get toys. Mm -hmm. uh, I got the Dragon Ball game and then uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I got that oh. that Purge Trooper, which I'm so glad I did because that's like 80, 90 bucks now. Um, but I haven't played that either. I'm, Kakarot, so, I, I'm I shocked did you did get the my adventure Xbox. one. Um, I, I pre-ordered it so I could get the Outback Hulk. And then when I went to go pick up Outback Hulk, I didn't have to buy the game anymore. Oh. And considering that I didn't play the last two, mm -hmm. I wasn't going to get to that anytime soon. Yeah. And reviews were so kind of mixed that I was like, if I really, really want it, I'll find it for like 30 bucks in a couple months. I mean, I'll tell you this right now. I played the beta for that game. Not worth it. Yeah. Like, so, it, it, and when I went to go pick up my Outback Hulk, I had, I had already put 15 bucks down and I only owed six, which made no sense, but maybe sugar mama wife went and paid the rest off when you weren't looking no no i don't, I don't think so not for that not for <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh but yeah so staying with premium bandai though we also are getting a star wars probably gonna mess this one up meishu movie realization ronin mandalorian and this guy comes with a blaster rifle, blaster pistol, and sword. He's $100 and ships in March 2021. So I have to ask, because I know you're, you're, you're hard with Star Wars. Like, that's, that's like almost like your main line. Do you do the, the like, Samurai Ronin ones? Mm -mm. They're neat. I, I yeah. think they're cool. They, I have no place for them. I don't really do... I don't like to do a lot that aren't screen accurate or... Um, anything too outside of the normal um like i said i think they're neat but for the price uh. yeah i don't blame you there like if, like if you were doing the figure arts versions of the on-screen ones probably a little more justifiable just because it's like oh at least this one's less screen accurate and it's pretty substantially like quality wise better than the hasbro versions right so like it's worth the money these are really cool i like the idea behind it I feel like it'd be cooler if, like, maybe Disney did, like, a anime in this style for yeah, that would be Disney cool. Plus or something. Then then it's like, okay, that, that mentality of, like, oh, you have to have a cartoon to go with the toys to sell them. Well, it's almost true because these don't, like, even if there was a comic or something, something to sell me on these versions of the character just yeah. to get me more invested. So I'm like, okay, I really dig this version of the property, so I want these. Instead of just being, like, a, a real, like, niche crowd where you're like, oh... There's some people out there who just love that, like, samurai and ninja, like, style, so they're going to buy it anyway. Yeah, I, I guess that's a very niche, mar niche market of samurai Star Wars. I, I, I mean, I know Star Wars has its roots in samurai movies and such, but still, that, that, it seems a bit stretched. Yeah, that's a, that's a bit of a, a reach to be like, oh, yeah, well, you yeah. know, technically, George Lucas, this, that, and you're like, yeah, but, like... That, that's 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 a, yeah. you're just you're just trying to make an excuse at that point to get it like at that point just buy it <laughs> yeah yeah um but sticking with all like all of the bluefin brand stuff we are also getting and i'm assuming it's not approved because it just says add a cart so it must i'm assuming it's, ship, it's shipping now but we are finally gonna get a nasica of the valley of the wind van die i'm having a Sauzu galleria and it's a two and a half roughly two and a half inch figure she comes with her walking stick a rifle worm flute interchangeable parts and the glider and from the pictures it looks like the glider actually lights up the only caveat is it's 98 dollars. but as a as a nasca fan like a huge nasca mm -hmm. fan i'm like i i need this because it's so cool but i keep them like yeah. it's only two and a half inches <laughs> yeah uh Oh man, I could have made a really bad joke in my direction, but I'm gonna stop. Uh, 
and just say that my wife is a huge fan of Nausicaa. Not a huge fan of two and a half inch things so much. Um, <laughs> I still went there anyway. But I, yeah, this, this is a must have. I mean, they just don't make stuff for Nausicaa enough. It's the first mm-hmm. uh, big Hayao Miyazaki original film. It's technically not even Studio Ghibli because the studio wasn't formed yet, even though mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. Um, so it's that early. And we just don't get that much stuff for this. We were talking about this before we started. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's tons of Totoro stuff. There's tons of um, Kiki's Delivery Service. Even, like, what my favorite, which is um, Princess Mononoke. There's there's some stuff. There's not a lot. Even even Howl's Moving Castle. That. Like, there's st- tons mm-hmm. of stuff from that. Yeah, it's Spirited Away. Oh, my God. We have so many no-face things in the house. It's not even funny. Um, but Nausicaa, there's just, there's just not enough. There's a few model kits. There's, like, a mm-hmm. few bug model kits. But that's kind of it. Yeah, I just I keep looking at it and like, oh man, even at that if if it looks even half as good as the picture, mm-hmm. I'm like that's that's impressive for for two inch tall like yeah action yeah. figure because that looks like they've got more detail in that than you get in a three and three quarter scale like GI Joe or mm-hmm. Star Wars figure. Yep, I just yeah, oh, it, it looks incredible. I they like like I said, they just don't make enough. Like I don't think you can pass this up. Yeah, I might have to to just you know, slide into my girlfriend's DMs with a, hey, I know what I want for Christmas. There you go. Because I, I, I don't know, if I, I want it so bad, but I just can't in my head just find $98 for two, two and a half inches. <laughs> I know, but you're also getting the glider. I mean, the main part yeah, is the glider. And, but like, so. I, I, for someone who buys like Mezco figures. Yeah, I get Which it. are in that price range where I get a six inch action figure of soft goods clothing, tons of accessories, hands, heads. To be like, oh, well, it's only two and a half inches, but you get the glider. I'm like, mm, mm. yeah, I get it, but you still need I'm to like, get it. I, I, I do. It's oh, it looks so cool. Like I, you'll regret the rea- it it's gone. The, the re- reaction you had when I sent you the folder mm-hmm. for this week's episode mm-hmm. was the reaction I had when I saw it on Twitter. Like I went to Bluefin, uh, Bluefin Brands Twitter just because I was trying to find the links for the like two deal things for like $70 for the figure arts and all that. And I saw that, and I, I openly like, s- like squeaked. I was, I was like, oh, I, I have to have this. Like it was, oh, it's a must it's, have. It's, yeah, it's it's probably gonna be into my cart by the end of the night. Um, rounding out the Bluefin brands, though, we have Storm Collectibles, who announced, and I've seen, like, I I feel like I've seen this anime, but I just can't place it in my head. Um, gotcha Man Ken Washio the Eagle and he is still pending license approval. So there's no dates or information or price or anything on it yet. Just kind of some basic prototype pictures. He looks really cool. Yeah. And so you probably might know this under the Americanized name, which is battle of the planets. Okay. So that it was, sound a little more familiar. I think in the late seventies, early eighties. Um, and they showed it over here as battle of the planets. Um, and it was popular. It was, it was actually, I mean, I'm old, but that's before my time. Um, but I have, I know of it and I've seen some of the gotcha men, which is the original show from Japan. Um, mm-hmm. they've tried to like re like in the early two thousands, uh, a lot of companies were relaunching comic books. That's when, uh, devils do relaunch GI Joe and, uh, dream wave relaunch transformers. This was before IDW and battle of the planets was one of those other ones. They tried to relaunch and make it relevant again. Um, but it's cool to see these figures cause I forget what company, some company brought some figures out and they are very pricey. And even that storm collectibles, which are what about a hundred bucks. Yeah. They usually range between depending on how big it is, 75 to like one fifty, depending if yeah. it's like a big figure or like a normal. Yeah. And this will be much higher quality than those older ones. So if people oh, are yeah. fans of that property, it, they're really cool looking. They're all yeah. kind of like a bird motif and yeah, I, I, that, I, like I really remember like this style. almost like a, like Power Rangers. Like each of them has a different color yeah. and their capes are slightly different. Some are shorter, some are like longer. Uh, like they in my kind head, of follow the Voltron archetype because there's yeah. the main hero guy, there's the big guy, there's the little guy. Yeah, like in my head, like I said, I keep visualizing it. I can see it and it, like I recognize it, but I can't mm-hmm. like I couldn't yeah. tell you any of their names. I couldn't tell you what the plot is. Like it, all of it just nowhere to be found i could tell you some of the names from voltron that's all i got yeah i, I couldn't even tell you that <laughs> pidge pidge keith i think lance was one princess allura are, are you sure is, is this literally all like... coming back to me now i have 
haven't thought about Voltron in a long time. I feel like you're just naming off like in sync characters at this point. You'll yeah. never know. <laughs> I might be. Uh, but closing you won't out, check. <laughs> yeah, I, it doesn't I know, matter I enough. <laughs> Uh, closing out the news, though, we have some NYCC exclusives from Storm Collectibles. So we have Street Fighter V, E Honda, the nostalgia version. We have Samurai Showdown, Harumaru, in red costume. The Golden Axe, Purple Skeleton Warrior 2 pack. And the Mortal Kombat, Motaru, bloody version. So I'm just going to say, I have resisted buying the Golden Axe skeletons since they like came out but seeing a purple version of them like ooh, i might i might pull the trigger finally they're so versatile they really are like there's they so could, many things i mean you do. don't need to have it for golden axe who cares yeah. that, i mean that was that cool. was that was my rationalization with them originally was like oh i can yeah. put this with almost anything like yep. they're so cool but i'm just like do you need them do you really need yeah. it just like skeletons i'm like yeah i do and then yeah. they're purple you and I'm definitely like, need purple ones yeah purple ones i mean mm -hmm. that's just a no-brainer yep the best color for the best turtle with now That's the best right. skeletons. So like yes. full circle. <laughs> yes. hundred percent agree. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't have any storm collectibles whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Um, I have, I have a friend who had, um, some of the mortal Kombat ones. They look great. They display awesome. Um, it's just, they don't have any properties that I'm really, really into. Cause I don't do a lot. Like obviously with games since I don't, I haven't, I haven't played, I used to really like games, but mm -hmm. I haven't played games. You, you reach a certain age, and it's like, mm -mm. <laughs> I'm going to go to bed. I can stay up and play hours of games, or I can go to bed. I'm going to go to bed. I, mean, I feel that. I do like my sleep, but, no, man. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I personally, I've only, I think I've only owned three. I do have the exclusive they did a few weeks back for Scorpion, where he's got ice arms. So I'm just like, oh, that's cool. That it's just something where it's like really cool looking, and either I'm gonna get it, and I'm gonna love it, or it's gonna have enough value to use as trade fodder, because it's gonna be something that's super sought after. Because on the website he sold out instantly, but Big mm -hmm. Bad Toys had him for like a couple, like maybe an hour or so. So I was able to sneak in there and grab it. Um, beyond that, the only other two I think I've owned is I are a couple Street Fighter ones, but not because I'm a Street Fighter fan. Like I enjoy it, but it's not like something I actively collect. I was actually using them for customs. So I originally bought Ryu with the intentions of using his parts to make a soft goods Bane figure. But then they came out with Alex, who's this big beefy boy. And I'm like, well, pff, bye bye Ryu. We've mm -hmm. got a new, uh, a new option in town. And I got him and he did become my Bane, which I showed off in last week's weekly purchases. And that they're incredible figures, like their articulation yeah. and everything. Even like I have a baggie full of the accessories I didn't use, like his faces and energy effects. I'm like the energy effects. I'm like, I almost want to keep them, but I don't have a use for them. Like they're just so cool with like the details and the like color and stuff. Well, I mean, you could definitely try to incorporate them into your figure arts with your Dragon Ball. That's what I, I miss. The early Dragon oh, Ball dude, figures yeah. used to come with way more effects and the figure rise figures come with effects. Uh, I just I would love more of those. I think those look so cool when you get them all set up. Yeah. Did you see that they actually uh, on their Instagram, Tamashi Nation put up a poll to ask fans, like, what do they want more of? More faces, more energy effects, more accessories. And I'm like, well, this is the order I'd want it in. I'd want, you know, faces, energy and accessories. But ultimately, I'd rather you just, you know, maybe give me more faces with the figures and then sell me a pack yes. of like five yep. energy effects. Yep. In various colors or like here's these energy effects of blue, same ones in purple, red, yeah. so on forth. I, I will throw money at you. Yep. Till the end of my days yep. to just get multicolored energy effects. And yep. I'm hoping they actually read the comments in them because if they did, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's that's the way to do it. Like I I keep debating on um, getting because the Ultra Instinct silver haired Goku, he comes with the the Kamehameha ball, which could be used mm -hmm. for like a thousand different things. And yep. I keep debating on just like, well, I could just buy a bunch of those and sell the bodies for fodder to people who want to customize them. And then I'd have just a bunch of these little energy balls laying around. But I'm like, oh man, that's a lot of work. <laughs> right. That is a lot of work. <laughs> um, especially because they don't, they, they don't stick in the hands very well. 
like I actually got tired of it at one point and thank God most of the like flesh tone hands are the same color. I took one of the um Saiyan raised on earth Goku hands, the like the one that's like like this, glued mm-hmm. it to that hand, and right now I'm using it for Gogeta on my shelf with uh Broly. And I'm like, yeah. well now I need a, I need one for the other hand too. So I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the problems we face. Oh man, it's just first world toy collector mm, problems. True. <laughs> true oh uh, yeah so that wraps it up for the news we're gonna move on to weekly purchases i'm gonna let nate take it over because yeah i'll be honest with everyone my weekly purchases got shit canned because the post office decided that it was too late for them to come to my door and just left a notice telling me to come pick up my power ranger so mm. it's it's all up yeah. to you to, to carry this segment all right well let me see i got a couple of things here um the first thing i'm gonna show is not even mine uh, but I thought I'd show it off. I bought this for a friend of mine. These just kind of dropped suddenly. Um, I found them this weekend. So this is the Vintage Collection Star Wars. A new wave kind of appeared. We knew about Cheer at Imwe from Rogue One. Uh, mm-hmm. That was up for pre-order on Pulse months ago. Um, but then it also has the Arc Trooper 5s, which is actually from that um, Hasbro Pulse Con exclusive 3-pack. Mm-hmm. One of those is on the, on the Vintage card and then a, a Luke. But I thought this Hondo was really cool. I thought it was interesting that it was on a Star Wars card, though, instead of, like, uh, Clone Wars or Rebels or something that like that. Which he, yeah, because uh, Fives comes with a, a Clone Wars card. Um, I also got a couple of Pulse uh, deliveries. This is the exclusive. This was going to be the European exclusive, Cad Bane. Um, so it's got the Toto robot in there. That's the exclusive part. This will be in the main line. Um, I got this because it went up for pre-order, and I could. And then a buddy of mine who's a total inbox collector didn't get it, so he's taking mine. He's buying mine off me. Oh, I'll just get the thing. regular. Yeah, I'll just get the regular retail edition. I don't really need the robot. I only got it because I could. <laughs> um, and then one of the uh, one of my uh, Hasbro PulseCon Ooh. exclusives came. This thing is nice. So this is the Snake Supreme Cobra Commander, and it's got this nice little slip cover. And it's got this really cool, obviously, cobra, but snake motif all over it. But the way that it opens. Oh, buddy. Yeah. So um, I already have the regular Cobra Commander and I'm going to get the or I, I have the Pulse exclusive Regal Cobra Commander, which is like a different lighter blue. Shade That's blue, a whole. Yeah. yeah. So this one, I think I'm going to leave like this in the box. I mean, you can take him out. I mean, he's not mm. behind plastic, but. This is just such a cool display and such yeah, a cool that, thing. That's just so cool. Like that's one of those things yeah. where I almost have to buy two ones so I can play with one and the other one yeah. just to have like that. <laughs> yeah. So it is very nice and I love the packaging display. So and I didn't get my Hellfire Club or my Endor set from from Hasbro. So this was the only thing I got. Um with the exception of also a lot of this stuff isn't for me, but I'm showing it <laughs> off anyway. Nate's out there just, you know. Helping people out. I try. I toy really shopping. So, <laughs> so this is the other PulseCon exclusive that I got. Oh, the, the uh, yeah, the Tully's Terrible yeah. Night. So yeah, this I got for a friend too. I have. I don't get the Plasma collection. I I bought the Maddie Collector ones when they came out, and then the Diamond Select ones were announced. So I sold all my Maddie Collector ones, and I've got the Diamond ones. And honestly, I, I like those. They're good. The, the Hasbro ones are better face sculpts, a hundred percent. But uh, I'm good. So, but I did pick this up for him since I'm a premium member. Um, so it's got the other terror dog in there, or at least the option to display it as the other terror yeah. dog. Because the terror dog was the build a figure, and there's two. So, so that was cool. So, yeah, I remember when they announced those, that was a big thing. Like, oh, are yeah. people going to buy a second wave of these just to get a second terror dog? Yeah, it was a pain enough to get a second one from Diamond Select. Mm-hmm. Um, so, all right. So then, then you already saw my other big. Big big purchase, literally, which yeah, was the, the biggest. Yeah, I just <laughs> yeah, I just got that last Friday. Um, how do you have yours displayed? Are you? Um, so right now he's actually just in like a, a vanilla pose behind me, looking oh, down okay. at everybody. Uh, I plan to probably have him displayed like hunched over with like the squeezing Goku yeah. and like the poked out eye. Yep, um, me too. Haven't decided oh. if I'm gonna have Yajirobe on there or not, but. <laughs> have Yajirobe in there. All right, so let's 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 show some stuff off that I got for me. 
Um, I had this last week, but I, I forgot to mention it, and then I got a chance to open it over the weekend, which is my Profit Director oh, Destro. I'm so jealous that you, find, you got the Pimp Daddy Destro. Yeah, I've been it waiting is awesome. For mine. Oh, it's so cool. It's so ridiculous. It's, I mean, do you know the history behind it? I have no clue. I just, we, one week we covered it and I'm like, oh my God, it's Pimp Daddy Destro. Like I'm yeah. not a G.I. Joe guy and I need this just because it's yeah, so, you do, so funny. Because it's awesome. Um, you know, back in 1997, the original G.I. Joe line had been dead for three years and they did a, a Toys R Us exclusive run. Uh, they were just remolds using old molds, but they took the mold from the second Destro figure, which was like 91 or 92, and they were playing around with color variations. And one of the things that they came up with was this leopard print collar and this red jacket. And I, the rumor is that there's less than 400 of them in existence that made it out of the factory. It was, mm -hmm. it was a test. It was never supposed to be released. Um, I remember when the those those came in. I actually worked at Toys R Us in 1997 at that time. Um, I want to say I saw one, but I think that's just my memory filling in a gap that really wasn't there because I didn't buy those. Um, but that was like then became the famed Pimp Daddy Destro, mm -hmm. and then they redid it as a San Diego exclusive in the 25th anniversary line. Um, and so now they did that with the classified, and it's it's great the. The little, uh, the cape is awesome. The sunglasses are just great. I mean, this is so not Destro, and that's what just makes it even better. Like, I mean, just look how ridiculous. And the whole leopard it's, cape, oh, it's, so it's insane. This, this could fit, I mean, this could be an amazing street level uh, villain for your Punisher figure or mm -hmm. Daredevil or something like that. I mean, you, you can use this for other things, no problem. Yeah. I'm still waiting it's for fun. Entertainment Earth to be like, it's here. T yeah. Take, let's take your money. And they're just they're I taking up, a good old time. I, I had it on pre-order through Pulse. I ended up canceling it. I had it at GameStop, and it was the same price, so I, I grabbed it. Um, and then let me show off this. So I finally, through Baby Bad Toy Store, I got my Toxic Avenger from Super Ooh. 7, so my Toxie. So he's very cool. Looks very much like the original Toxic Crusader figure, which I have somewhere. I don't have a lot of vintage on display, but I have a lot of it still boxed up mm -hmm. from when I was a kid. Um, and then, let's see. Probably my favorite purchase of the week, and this will go back to last week's ridiculous uh, Power Ranger conversation. So this is an SH Figure Arts. This is a red Die Ranger. Um, this is from... I always have to look at it to get the entire name. Gosai Sentai Dai Ranger, which you can see here. Oh. I have on DVD. Now, you would not recognize this guy. No. They will never make him in uh, the Lightning Collection, which is why I'm glad I have this figure arts. But you may recognize one of his teammates. Oh. Um. Because the White Ranger was, the, was a Dai Ranger character. He's the only oh. character they carried over into Power Rangers, with the exception of the Zords and the villains. The team never got used. So I actually have some more Die Ranger representation. They don't scale exactly. But you, um, you put them in those dynamic poses and you couldn't tell yeah, anyway. Yeah, it, it'll be fine. So yeah, I was really happy to get this because I got this for a great deal. Um, and then literally today, I just I stopped at Target and I picked up... Daredevil Ooh, nice. and Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Um, I think these look great. People are trying to sell off their Negasonic Teenage Warhead, and I, I have to have her. Like, I have loved all of these Fox X-Men figures. Um, then I also got Wolverine. Ooh, I Ooh, saw that one today while I was out. Hey! <laughs> yeah. Uh, so these are great. I, I like the Amazon exclusive one better, but it's still cool. Mm -hmm. And then... Old Man Logan and Old Man Hawkeye. So I just picked up those. So. Um, I think that's it, which is still a lot. Yeah, I mean, that, that's. I think that might be the second most that we've ever had during a, uh, a, a <laughs> weekly purchases. I think the most was there was okay. one week where I, I went a little, little crazy with the figure arts. And I, I literally, between figure arts and a few other things... I had like 17 things in my wow. purchases. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Um, so like, I think that's our, our, our current record. And I think you got pretty close there. <laughs> eh, yeah. I, I also, it's not a toy per se, but I also got the, uh, 
Friday the 13th Scream Factory set in this week, Blu-ray set. So it's like oh. 16 discs or something for all 12 movies. Um, so I was pretty excited about that. Very nice. Yeah. So since I don't have anything for weekly purchases, I want to pose a question just because I have a an internal dilemma that I'm dealing with with the okay. world at the moment. So have Stretching you... Out my uh, leg. <laughs> you're you're, uh, you're obviously in different toy groups on, on Facebook and such. Yes. Have you ever just gotten to a point where the community of a certain line got so toxic or just so like almost like internally like cannibalized that you just kind of lost interest in the line and like we're kind of like just like it doesn't it doesn't bring me joy because you they these people ruined it for me kind of yeah um it's there's two that i can think of um one first one's doctor who um, mm-hmm. the, the fandom is a mess right now. Um, and it, it not only affected my toy buying, um, but it kind of affected my, my personal relationship with the doctor, you would say. Um, I, I like Jodie Whittaker a lot. I don't think there's a good show around her. Um, I think the companions are weak. I think that the writing is not great um so i don't like the showrunner so um that doesn't help and then when you have a fandom that one can't let you know david Tennant go or matt mm-hmm. smith go um and they all they want is for him to come back because they they're young and they're cute and i get that they are young and they are cute i like them but i also like the old man with the eyebrows I mean, yeah you can relate to that one <laughs> yeah i like that one a lot um so like you know that fandom has kind of like kind of like torn itself apart because if you do like the new stuff then you're awful and you just you're too woke and you uh uh, are a social justice warrior or whatever i'm like i don't i don't care it's a show about a space alien that goes through space and time if if it's going to be a woman great that's not out of the realm of possibility in this show that i've seen i do want better stories though and that has hurt um star wars has definitely been a big one because uh, I mean, what what can I say about Star Wars fandom that, I mean, it's awful. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that might be, like, top top, top tier yeah. of just, like, it internally tearing itself apart on a regular basis anytime something new is, comes out. Yeah, it, I, it, and I don't get it. I, I, I've, I've never met people who dislike Star Wars more than Star Wars fans. Um, I, you know, I, I'm not a big prequel guy, you know, I'm... I, I, I grew up in the 80s, so like I wasn't around when the first one came out, but you know I grew up on Return of the Jedi and Ewoks. I, that was the right age for me. I was five when Return of the Jedi came out, so of course I like Ewoks. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know prequels aren't for me, but I don't bash them, though, either. I don't get mad at people for liking them, and people get mad at people who like the sequels. And yeah, the sequels are not necessarily where I would have taken the story, but that's not why I'm in charge. Could they have done better? Sure. I mean... I'm not going to say they're perfect, but I had a good time with them and I like them. Um, and that hasn't really affected my, my toy buying in the sense that I haven't stopped buying them, but it certainly has affected my toy buying because they're not making characters that I want from those movies. Mm-hmm. And I also understand why though, too, because they don't sell or not. People don't want necessarily more fins and rays and pose and stuff like that. And I get yeah. that, but yeah, it, oof, being a fan of anything is so tough anymore. Yeah, like, cause it, it really is. I, it, you know, it, like just eat, like even in Dragon Ball, um, you know, you have those people that, you know, I love the subtitled version, but you have some people who just like, re- flat out refuse to even like intermingle with someone who watches the dub and vice versa. And I'm just like, that's stupid. You yeah, know, like I if you're fans, like you're fans. Bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, cool. I I like subtitle. I like the original more than anything else. You, you know, somebody else sees a couple episodes of Z and thinks it's neat. Great. We're all fans. I don't, I, I guess I just, as great as like internet and Facebook and social groups can bring us together. It really is. Yeah. It brings us bad. together to tear us apart. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so essentially my, my, my dilemma is I got like about a year or two ago, I got back into collecting the WWE figures mm-hmm. with their elite line over at Mattel and like they're they're not like anything to write home about they're they are what they are the head scans are are 50 50 they either look incredible or they look like trash um 
I even went to like the extent where I have on the other side of my desk, there's a full setup with like a real scale ring, the backdrop of the audience. I've got some lights set up, um, all that, that fun stuff. Even have like the, the barriers around the ring and stuff. And like, I was really, really into the line. And then I started joining more and more of these, these Facebook groups. And I'm actually in one for, there's a podcast called the major wrestling figure podcast with mm -hmm. two people who uh, used to wrestle for WWE And now I actually know promotions. who those guys are. Uh, that, I'm, I'm impressed. I don't know much about wrestling, but I know those guys because they, they would go to toy stores on YouTube all the time. And I would watch right? them, that. That so. was, that was pretty much what got me back into it. Yep. I stumbled on their stuff originally on the network because they tried to do it on the network but WWE's just stupid and can't do things right. right um and then they went and did it themselves and that's kind of what reignited my like wow i really i miss collecting wrestling figures but over the past few months i mean yeah granted obviously everyone's kind of got like like you know pandemic fever we're all trapped in well anyone who doesn't want to you know go and risk other people's lives or their own life are trapped inside and so that probably plays a a little bit into it, but I feel like it's not that much. I, I almost, I almost, I don't want to blame those two, but at the same time, it is kind of their fault because they're an influencers, but they, they seem to be out of touch with how collecting works unless you're wealthy because they yeah. preach over and over that, Oh, you know, we shouldn't like, you shouldn't be flipping new stuff that hits the shelves. You should, you know, help each other out, you know, cost plus shipping. Like I'm a part of their Patreon. So I'm in their Patreon Facebook group. And like, that's a rule is if it's on, if it's currently being shipped, you cannot sell it for more than retail plus shipping. But on the flip side, Matt Cardona, I legit got in an argument with him on a, on a thread over the fact that ringside collectibles takes advantage of their customers. And they, they sell them at eBay prices for things that they're getting for the same cost that Walmart is. And like the two arguments that keep getting thrown out there are essentially, well, at first the pre-orders are more expensive because they're flying them in. Sure, fine. You get them a month or two earlier than Walmart. I get that. I disagree with the fact that at that point they should all be a flat price. It should all be since, you know, some of them are $24.99. They should all be $24.99. But instead they're like, oh no, this person's $24.99 because you might not like them as much. This person you're probably going to want to buy. So they're $29.99. And then they're like, oh, but if you use the discount code, you'll get like $2 off. So really, it's only $26.99. And like, no. Um, but then the ringside claims that after the second shipment comes in, they drop their prices down the retail, which is a flat out lie. I have never, except for when they do sales, seen a figure on their website for $19.99. It's always at least $22 or higher. And yeah. I get they can say, oh, well, there's a 10% off like discount code, this, that. I don't care. That's not the point of a discount code to bring it down to retail. Um, yeah. So, but then the argument against that is supply and demand. At that point, everyone wants them. Well, at that point, they're hitting Target and Walmart. So I get that distribution problems make it hard to find these figures sometimes. But to, to upcharge just because, you know, Walmart or Target can't get their shit together, like right. that's, that's still taking advantage of your customers. And they've essentially like I love these guys so much. Like they, I enjoy their show. I listen to it every week. I listen to their their weird figure federation thing where they basically book fantasy shows with action figures from old lines from the wrestling world. Um, but their fan base and a lot of the wrestling fan base is almost brainwashed to the point where like they're taking the side of big business. They're like. No man, their inside's a business. They need to make money. Like if you can't afford it, you shouldn't be collecting this line. I'm like. These are Mattel figures. We're not right. like, I'm in a Mezco group where we're paying 80 to 150 for figures on a regular basis. And that group at least understands like, okay, this figure was totally worth it. This figure Mezco dropped the ball and this is just garbage and we deserve better. Where like it, it all kind of like came to a head last night um, ringside. So I have this theory of the new AEW figures. They had two chase figures, Chris Jericho and Cody Rhodes. One was one of a thousand. One was one of 500. Obviously, a handful would go to employees, talent, influencers, so on and so forth. Well, these figures hit early August, shelves at Walmart. Not a single chase was found at Walmart. The only ones that have popped up on any social media have come from Ringside, essentially. Ringside sent two, one of each to the guys at Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. They accidentally let one slip through in a case that someone ordered. And then they've given away two Chris Jerichos. 
Last night they put up the Chris Jericho chase and they charged a hundred dollars each for it. And my theory is that they have a shady back, like backdoor deal with jazz Weirs and Jeremy Padauer where they're sending all the chases to them to scalp because they're getting them for below retail cost. The same cost that Walmart would have paid. And it's not chase figure at this point because you're not chasing it. You're not going out and hunting and finding it in the wild. It's an exclusive that's being scalped by the exclusive holder. Yeah. Anyone who's like spoken out about it has basically just been a crybaby and needs to get over themselves. And what do you expect? It's a chase. And what do you expect from a chase? I used to collect Funko Pops. You go out to the store, you dig through all 37 of the Green Goblins and get disappointed, and then you go home until eventually <laughs> you find it or you break down and buy it for double the cost. <laughs> That's a chase. Yeah. Like, so, like, the fact that anyone who opposes the almighty, like, Jazzwares and Mattel and Ringside just gets, like, eaten alive. Yeah. Well, it, kind of on the flip side, um, there was a, I don't know how much toy stuff you watch on YouTube. I'm, I'm assuming a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I, that's generally what I watch. And me too. There was that's a like ch- 90% there, of my YouTube yeah. experience. Uh, I, are you familiar with retro blasting? I think I've seen some of their stuff. Yeah. Okay. So they started out, I, I thought they were a really cool channel. Um, they would do like cartoon series reviews and then review that toy line that corresponded so a lot of 80s stuff because that's when that when he grew up and then he did a lot of videos on restorations and i thought that was really interesting so vintage toy restorations but he, lately i feel um that he's just become this beacon of negativity around modern stuff and one of the mm-hmm. videos that he put up was kind of about has bros So, like, these are people who defend Hasbro no matter what. Mm -hmm. And I I guess I fall in that category a little bit. So I guess I would almost be like that person arguing for ringside collectibles. Now, I'm not because I don't know Mm -hmm. enough about the business. And the fact that they raise and fluctuate prices seems super shady. Um, But I think they're... So this is this is related and not, I guess, in certain ways, because I do critique Hasbro, but I also appreciate what they're doing and what they're trying to do. And, and there's mm-hmm. there's a difference between critiquing and constructive criticism or um, those guys. There has blow. So we got has bros and has blow. This is a terrible name. They can make all kinds of puns. Yeah, um, I feel like, yeah, that's just asking to be called the has blow jobs. Like, right, right, right. <laughs> so I think there's a fine line there. Um, and that the problem is, is that the, it's the internet and people don't look things up or do any research and they just decide their opinion is fact when they don't really know anything. Um, so I think that's like a combination of that. I think that maybe what you're seeing a little bit, if that's mm. making sense at all. Yeah, um, I, I get it. Cause yeah, there are there, like, yeah. I did a segment every week of this show for the first like two months about basically us tearing NECA a new asshole because of the shit show that they caused. Right. So I've been on both sides of that spectrum where I'm like, they're do they're finally fixing the problems. They're doing this and that they're going the right direction. And in other weeks I'm like, they are garbage. They need to get their shit together. So like I, I I'm about, I'm pretty fluid when it comes with my opinion about things. I let it based yeah. week to week based on what the current conditions are. I'm not going to be like, no, I don't care how many times they screw up. NECA is God, but like, yeah. no, like I, I very much so like if, if something happens, you need to take the right steps and fix it. Or my, my opinion is going to start to kind of go down Yeah, and, and vice versa. If you do things to fix it, my opinion goes back up. It's weird because you know, the, the whole concept of pricing is a little odd because we're at this point, we're used to a $20 price point for a, an action figure. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think a lot of fans don't, especially because I belong. I like I belong to like this Masters of the Universe Origins group, and this Masters of the Universe Origins group is going nuts with the fact that they're getting their kids to play with these figures that they played with as kids because they look the same. Mm-hmm. And while that's cute, I, I'm not buying a lot of it. I, mm-hmm. The kids don't play with toys. I had one, they didn't play with toys. Uh, it's just they're not interested anymore they don't play video games they They, they do if they're like at that like two-year-old like age right yeah but once they get like three or four it seems like instantly it's it's yeah give me give me an ipad yeah action figures are like 30 and up i mean let's let's get real here um we're the audience 
kids are not going to come in and save the toy industry. And uh, I think a lot of people just aren't realistic in their expectations on what a toy company should do. Now, Mm -hmm. in the sense of ringside, that seems really weird that they're getting, like they they could possibly be getting this stuff from jazz wares. Um, I also think that if they're going to be, because from what I know about them, they're kind of the premier dealer in, Wrestling oh, yeah. they, they are the the biggest wrestling figure distributor in in yeah and they have the world. their own exclusives right sometimes yeah they, they get their own side. Mattel yep. exclusives they even got like with the AEW line they got exclusives through that too yeah so if they're working so closely in conjunction I guess I don't really understand why they can't ship them Mattel can't ship them whole cases of certain figures that they know are going to be popular Hasbro mm-hmm. does it they don't do it to walmart and target but as a individual retailer or an independent retailer you can buy whole cases of characters you could get whole cases of mandos you could get whole cases of you know whatever so i guess that would be my thing like why isn't mattel giving them that option if they maybe they are i i don't know yeah it's but hard it, to tell, it almost yeah. seems like it's not it's it's all still by case breakdowns mm-hmm. so for a figure to fluctuate like that's what kind of bugs me about amazon even Amazon will fluctuate and it's being sold and shipped from Amazon. Mm-hmm. When all of a sudden a Destro figure from classified is 35 bucks. It's like, well, this isn't like the stock market. It's, it's an action figure. So it should be 1999, not until it hits a, maybe a secondary seller if they want to recharge for it. But uh, yeah, the whole, the whole industry and the whole fandom is super weird right now. I think I'm rambling at this point. Um, I mean, I just rambled for like 15 minutes about like yeah. how how I, I feel like the the wrestling figure collecting like world has just kind of decided. Oh, you're either with big big business or you're against us. Like, yeah. So it's like dude, don't don't feel bad a, at all. <laughs> there's a problem I think across almost all fandoms right now. Um, you know, I see it in almost every group, but people are just angry, and and maybe it is because we're at home or. You know, our country's not in the greatest shape. No matter which side you're on, yeah, I don't want to get into that whole show. thing. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's real bad, and uh, people can't agree on even the most simplest things. Like, I- I'm not even going to get into it. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you and I stand a, a very similarly in that yeah. kind of sense. But uh, I just people just can't. They can't have conversations. You know, the, the minute somebody agrees with somebody, we, we deviate to name calling immediately mm-hmm. on social media or in forums or, you know, bulletin boards. If that still even exists, that's whew, that's oh, early. You dated times. yourself. Yeah, I did. <laughs> when, I, when I would hook up to my prodigy account. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. circa 1993. <laughs> oh, man. I was yeah. two years old. Yeah. Was fourteen, so yeah, but yeah, people are angry. Stuff doesn't make sense. I wish companies were a little more upfront about certain things, but then again, I also think maybe some of them are. Like, I think Super Seven is really upfront about stuff, oh, yeah. and people give them shit constantly. So I, I don't know what the see, right. I must not is. be in the right places. Cause I I feel like everything I see has just been like people sucking off Super Seven. Oh like, my god. I'm glad that's the way it's heading because I probably have left all these groups. But oh my god, they 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 would go after Brian Flynn with a pitchfork and they want to take off his head and it, he's the worst. And Masters of the Universe fans are are probably I think one of the most toxic fandoms outside of Star Wars. It's just a toy based mm-hmm. fandom. Oh, Masters of the Universe is terrible. So that's but where that that's where those. I see a lot of that come from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cause, I mean, granted, I didn't really pay attention to Super 7 until the Turtles started right. rolling out. So, like, everything I saw was like, oh, my God, this is the greatest thing ever. Bye, NECA. Like, so maybe yeah. it's just Randy took the heat. Rand- Randy's now on, on everyone's shit list, so they've moved on. <laughs> I yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, we we still don't know the workings behind all the deals that got made. Because, you know, Viacom owns Nickelodeon, which owns TMNT mm-hmm. now. Um and they've obviously kind of let that license spread. So, you know, NECA has it. Um, Super 7 has it. You know, 
playmates, while they're not really doing anything with it, are still the master license holder. So there had to be all these agreements. And I, and I assume Super 7 is able to do it because they are primarily a mail order based mm-hmm. company. So that's how they're able to sell them. And then NECA, all, they're a retailer. And so they have to go through these stores and go through exclusives. And that's why they're they're experimenting with their online. So I think that's how they're skirting around it. But I don't know how those contracts exactly work. See, I have a theory about all that when it comes to NECA. So I I believe that when NECA first got the, the go ahead to do the turtle stuff and it was just, you know, Comic-Con and, and NYCC exclusive stuff mm-hmm. that Playmates was playing hardball. They're like. No, we're still, you know, we're still doing decent in sales. We don't want any competition. These are the terms. Take them or leave them. But over the years, as Playmates has pretty much just like turned to hot dog shit and no mm-hmm. one's buying their stuff, they've mm-hmm. loosened up and NECA just never went back to the negotiation table after they got the Target deal. That's possible. I, I also like I, I floated a theory on my show and it got me and one of the co-hosts and we got into a pretty big argument over it. <laughs> I feel but, like I probably heard this one. Yeah, I, but I and this is grand. This is unheard of in the toy industry. So this would be the, the like uh, one of the only times this has happened. But I think that Playmates is potentially getting some sort of kickback for these other companies also having the license. Because you also oh, think about it, guarantee it. DC Collectibles did it last year with their mm-hmm. Teenage Mutant Turtles versus Batman line. So, and there's some other company. Well, Mondo did them. They're, now, they're the large scale. And there's another company that's doing another type of figure. And it's like, what's going on here that, you know, we have Flamingos with the Master Toy license, but now, like, there's all these other companies involved. And I just wonder if there is some sort of Oh, yeah. I, me and Jamar have talked about that. Though. Like, I feel like there's got to be some sort of like percentage of sales that, mm-hmm. that Playmates gets because they, they certainly aren't making money with their stuff. Right. So why right. not get paid to sit back in the shade while someone else does, get like goes and makes better figures that people actually want? They're going to make I'm more money off that than making stuff that's going to sit on the pegs until it gets thrown away. Right. I'm definitely interested in how that works with Super 7 because those designs are the Playmates designs. And a lot of those characters were strictly Playmates characters. They didn't show up in the comic or the cartoon until maybe later when they were developed as a toy. They might have shown up in the Archie comic, but that was directly kind of based on the on the cartoon itself. So I I do wonder, like, did they the Super Seven have to pay a royalty to Playmates for those designs? Is or is that just tied up in the the TMNT license altogether? And if Playmates ever lost the license, say like Bandai did with Power Rangers, because that was mm-hmm. crazy when that happened. Um, you know, if Playmates would lose it altogether, how does that then affect NECA or Super 7 going forward? So it, I, I would love to, to know more about that. Right. I'd love to, to be in the room where those, those mm-hmm. deals happen just to just to see the logistics of like, OK, how much of the shaft is Playmates giving these other companies yeah. to to make these figures happen. And that, yep. that's why my theory is that like NECA just because they were on such thin ice at first and they got that little bit of leeway on the leash, they just were too afraid to go back to the table. But then it's suddenly like you've got super seven who's li- like NECA's not making anything that playmates was making. So they weren't competition right. at all. Like right. they're not making nineties cartoon or movie turtles or anything like that. They're, they're making based off the new cartoon and repacking the, the old eighties toys. Yeah. Um, but then when Super 7 comes out, is literally doing the same thing, but better that Playmates would be doing. Right. Neck is like, well, wait. Is that an option? Like, can we do, like, big boy, like, stuff like that? And I think that's why we got those, like, online made-to-order stuff was because, okay, that's the same vein as what they're doing with Super 7, but with the NECA figures. So, right. like, I, I'm, I, I honestly, like, deep down, really feel like it was just... NECA was afraid to go up to, to Big Boss Man over at uh, Playmates thinking, like, we don't want to lose this license. This is making us too much money. We enjoy it. Right. Let's just, you know, don't rock the boat if you don't have to. But then Super 7 came and they flipped the boat over. Right. So, like, it's, it's yeah, it's 
uh, so so many different things that could really be going on. It, we could be dead wrong, and it could just be like oh, yeah. Nickelodeon oh, yeah. stepped in and was like, listen, if you're not going to make some toys and make us some money, someone else is. So either let right. these people do it or you're not doing it anymore kind of thing. And that could prob- that's probably more likely what it is. That's the easiest one. Yeah. And it's not nearly as, you know, it's not as nefarious, but it doesn't yeah, make for sexy. good YouTube television. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. So now that we've rambled for like a half hour about, you know, the toy industry and, and the toxic fan bases, let's go yes. ahead and just wrap up the show. Um, before we go, I do want to remind everyone about our giveaway. Once we have 350 YouTube subscribers, we will be giving away a first place prize of the NECA Ultimate Metalhead and the Musical Mutagen box bundle which includes the extra large t-shirt tote bag souvenir ticket backstage pass and four guitar picks all you have to do is retweet or share the post on instagram or twitter with the hashtag modern toy fair 100 make sure if you are on instagram you are sharing it to your page i cannot see your stories after they're gone so if it's <laughs> not on your page i'm not going to find it so when we hit there you're pretty much sol yeah um and obviously you have to subscribe to the channel because that's the whole point of this um, but that's going to be it for this week's Modern Toy Fair news. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, you can catch Jamar over at Media Junkie with his Why Are You a Gamer podcast. Right now he is on hiatus for a few months just because he did have a baby boy. And they're still, you know, adjusting everything with that. So go back and listen to all the episodes that he did previously. I think there's got to be at least 20 or 30 of them at this point. It's a great show. Just has a conversation with different people in the video game world and finding out why they enjoy it, why they became and then of course we have nate who's with the figuratively speaking podcast he gave us an update last week do you have any news or anything where people can find you guys um you can still go to a uh, fig speak pod on instagram see our posts uh, you can follow us on facebook um i think the plan is that we should be back uh within the the beginning of november i think we're going to take this approach um the discord zoom type of approach we used to always do it uh, live together um that was part of the fun but you know getting to do this uh with you like i still see you i can see what you're showing mm-hmm. me and i i think this works so i think this is how we're going to end up coming back um because we've missed so much and so many good topics and uh it's hard to fight with with cory on our little group me uh text chat instead of doing it on air <laughs> in person <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, we I fight on a personal constantly. Level. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like for for people who have watched the show since the beginning, we used to have a show called Family Fight Club over at Media mm-hmm. Junkie, and it literally yep. evolved from just the five of us arguing in our group chat. And we're like, you know what? We should make this into a podcast. And then we made it a little more structured into like a game show. And yep, yeah, it, it's it, it really is not as fun to argue with someone and tell them that they're wrong when you can't see their face. Right. Right, especially because I know I'm right. <laughs> After we just talked about toxic toy uh, toy fans <laughs> and stuck in their ways. Who are always right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So make sure to check that uh, podcast out and keep track yeah, of Yeah, we've got, oh my God, we've got like 70-some episodes out there. I mean, even though it's old news, um, some of the conversations are really fun. We do get into a lot of weird discussions, conspiracy theories, uh, not like... Not like QAnon or anything like that. But I mean, like about <laughs> toys. Uh, the Illuminati's you know. of the of the toy industry. Yeah, we t- you know we talk a lot because on that show, like with the three of us, we're we're based around like Marvel Legends, Star Wars, uh, Transformers, import stuff. Um, it used to I used to be pretty heavy on the GI Joe side when I was uh, doing the club stuff, and uh, people didn't like when I talked about GI Joe. It was weird. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if they this. changed their mind now because classified is so hot, but oh, probably. nobody like that. P- people love G.I. Joe now. Yeah. Um, I will say this. I, I can vouch that the show isn't something where it's like, oh, because it was on at this time, they talked about these things that it doesn't work because 90% of the show is you guys literally talking about like, oh, I was at Walgreens this week and I found this finally. It just hit, started hitting shelves. And then you guys just start talking about that and it like turns into something completely mm-hmm. separate that had nothing yeah. to do with the original toy you're talking about. So it's, yeah. it's not something where you have to be like, it's not like this show where we're, we're literally talking about what's popular this week. It's something where it's more of just like three dudes getting together, talking about what toys they just bought and just having a good time. Like, yeah, and well, that, that's you. really yeah. it's we try to make it fun. Yeah, it's definitely a good listen. So go and check them out. Like you said, it's, it's Fig Speak podcast on Instagram. And then they're also just figuratively speaking podcast on Facebook. 
Uh, if you'd like to support my channel, though, of course, like and subscribe. But also, you can click the little link below for tpublic.com. I have anything from shirts, phone cases, pillows, masks, all sorts of stuff with our logo on it, along with a bunch of different designs I've worked up in the good old Photoshop. And if you enjoy our faces, hit the little bell, get notifications when our videos go up. We have Modern Toy Fair News on Fridays and Modern Toy Fair Reviews on Mondays. However, if you hate our faces and you just want to hear our voices shout at you for an hour, I have an audio-only version of the podcast. Modern Toy Fair News is available on Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Cast, Spotify, and other podcast apps you know and love. So it's on Spotify? And Spotify, yes. Okay, all right. Uh, so check that out and we will see you next week. Same toy time, same toy for a channel. Thank you for watching.